I saw that and I, I couldn't help myself. I don't know what I'm doing with all these bowls. I'm not going to cook in them, of course. They're too beautiful for that. But anyhow, the, in, the beans and the chicos are soaked overnight. Now, into a kettle. Uh, let's see, which one do we want here? Yes, got to figure out which kettle I put these in. Throw them into a kettle with enough water to cover. I bet I've got a little too much, so that's all right. We'll just take care of it in a hurry. And to that, we're going to add something that I've already prepared, namely one yellow onion sautéed, one large one, and uh, some uh, pork already sautéed, you see? So we'll put that in the pan along with our beans. An ample water to cover because we want to cook the beans down. It's going to take a long time for the beans and chicos to cook and be tender. And then we're going to add a bit of red chili powder. Now when I say chili powder, today I don't mean uh, the kind you buy in the can that is used for making what we call chili with chili con carne. Not at all. That has all kinds of other herbs in it. I mean plain chili powder. You can grind your own or just buy the pods and throw them in your blender. You say, well, that's grinding your own anyhow, isn't it? Remember, this is the heat. This is the heat. The seeds and the veins that you'll find inside the peppers, that's where the heat is. So if you don't want a lot of hot food, don't, uh, just don't uh, avoid peppers. That's silly. Simply avoid the seeds and the veins and you can still have wonderful times. Okay, and three cloves of garlic into the pot. We'll just dice it right in there. You got that? As I cut this up, I'll give you the recipe again. Six ounces of chicos that I've soaked overnight. Two cups of pinto beans, also soaked overnight. Then I sauteed in oil. You can use any kind of oil you want, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, peanut oil or olive oil. Don't use vegetable oils, they'll burn on you. I sauteed one large onion, three cloves of garlic, and then I sauteed separately a half a pound of pork. And I'm going to simmer this. The pork's cut up in little cubes, so you see one half pound is going to serve six or eight people. That's pretty frugal, isn't it? I think it is. Okay, on to the stove it goes now, along with our red chili that we just sprinkled in there. A little salt probably wouldn't hurt at all. And simmer that until it's tender. This is going to take about an hour and a half. Yes, I know. Every dish that I mention today is going to cause you to say, frugal in time? Uh, you have to stay home all day to do this. But that's what they did in those days. That's what they still do if they weren't going to cook this kind of food. It takes a long time. I have one on the stove, and uh, it's very, very delicious. We're now coming forth with Chico's and the man. No, that's not right. One of my friends said that before we started today. I thought it was disgusting. <laughs> Chico and the man. Chico is a dried corn. Let me move that a bit so you can see what I'm doing here. There you are. Uh, we're on a rug. There we go. And the, the beans, you see? The beans and the corn. There, you see a bean, you see the corn. If you can't tell the difference, adjust your set. Will you? <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? I know this sounds basic. It sounds like really basic cooking, but uh, that's what they did in those times. And it's very delicious. It's very delicious. When I smelled that pot a few minutes ago, I immediately thought of some restaurants in, uh, in Santa Fe and in Albuquerque. There's one in, in Santa Fe called uh, La Tertulia. La Tertulia. Sounds like Tertullian, the church father. You remember? Okay, don't remember. But there was a church father named Tertullian. This uh, La Tertulia is so good. It is so delicious that I sat down and I had three lunches. One, I just sat there uh, with a glass of beer in one hand and a uh, fork in the other, and they kept bringing on. I had three lunches before they could throw me out. It's that good. I'd love it. I do all of this for you. Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> next one. The next one we're going to try, not try, the next one we're going to do is my favorite. This is a green chili stew. It's Patty's, <coughs> excuse me, Patty's favorite too. She'll kill for this dish. This is what you do. We want to get some green chilies, uh, something like this. Here we go. You can find some green chilies at the market. They don't have to be hot ones necessarily. When they're fresh, they'll look like this. You see? And then you want to put them under a broiler until they're, where are the broiled ones? Here they are. Put them under a broiler until they begin to burn on the outside. Just stick them under broiler and roll them around a bit. And then you can take the skin right off. You see, look at that. See, isn't that a scream? And you peel them, and then you split them and take out the seeds. Get the seeds out of these. You just don't want all the seeds in the pot. And you want to do about six or seven of these peppers. And uh, then begin to make your stew. And it's a, it is literally a green chili stew. So delicious. It's a wonderful filling for, for um, um, enchiladas. Mm. We're talking serious eating today. So I'm going to chop up my six or seven peppers, green chilies. Now these are, not, these, are not, uh, these are not green peppers in the sense that we buy them in the market, not sweet bell peppers. 
We shouldn't really call a bell pepper a green pepper. It's green all right, and it's a pepper, but it's not a green pepper. Is that absurd? It's a bell pepper. All right, these will go into the pot along with, and I've already cooked this for you, I've browned a couple of pounds of pork. You see, I've cut it up into little cubes and browned it. Into the pot goes the chili. We just throw everything in now. Lots of chili. And we need to add, uh, let's see, a couple of tomatoes. There we are. And we're going to add some celery. I've chopped up, oh, two or three stalks. There we are. And the chilies, which we already have in there, and four, four cloves of garlic. I'm not going to take time to chop all this up right now. But anyhow, put in four cloves of garlic, all right? Throw it in the pot, and you're all set. Got it? All right, in it goes. I'm going to save those for another dish, because I'm not going to have time to cook this one until after you go. I have one all ready for you. Cover this with water. Just barely enough to, uh, to well, I'll show you. It's very simple. Don't drown it. Just until the water begins to appear. Uh, there, I, there it is. I can see it. See? Got that? That's all you want. Put that on the stove, and about an hour and a half later, heaven will strike. Let me show you. This, my wife and I have been looking for this dish for the longest time, and we finally figured out how to do it. Now, in the Pueblo Indians, who are very fond of this dish, would serve it along with potatoes and corn. Corn right in the pot. But I've eliminated the corn and the potatoes because I want a very rich filling for an enchilada or something like that. Uh, so I'm not going to do that today, but if you, uh, if you happen to be a, a member of the Pueblo tribe and you're watching me cook and I'm claiming this is legit and you know it's not, it's only because I don't have the potatoes and corn, right? Okay. Now this is not hot enough for you. Taste it. If it's not hot enough for you, throw in a shot. This is the best stuff. I've got to show you a product I just love. This is the best stuff. You're going to have trouble finding it. It's called Victoria, La Victoria Salsa Jalapeno. That's not just jalapeno salsa. It's salsa jalapeno. Hot. My Lord, they have to put this stuff in glass because they tried it in tin cans once and it ate the whole factory. Ate the tin cans, ate the boxes. It's murder. So I'm going to put in just a shot of this stuff. There, that's enough to stop traffic. Put in a couple of tablespoons and then I'll taste that for salt and seasoning. And serve that with some tortillas. Green ones, I mean, not, not green ones, blue ones if you like. You know, in New Mexico, they're very fond of blue corn. I showed you that, uh, that kernel of blue corn and they'll make... These are tortilla chips made from this product. Aren't they? Isn't that corn gorgeous? And the chip, you see, is kind of bluish gray, and you can make biscuits and dumplings and wonderful waffles. There's a guy in, uh, in Albuquerque, I don't remember his name, but the company's called Blue Corn Connection. You can find him in the directory. And he has, uh, he has a, a blue corn flour, all sorts of things. You know, blue enchiladas are terribly in with the new Santa Fe crowd. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to see us getting hooked up on another cuisine in this culture, but it always bothers me that it has to become camp. I wish it were not camp. I wish we would say, hey, this is basic. This is Americana. This is how it should be. All right, another dish. We're going we're gonna to load the counter today with wonderful things. Though the green chili stew, I think that's, uh, that's what you've got to try, try first. The next one is pisoli with pork. Pisoli is simply corn. We call it hominy, hominy, hominy. See, it's corn that's been soaked in water and lye till it swells up, and then they dry it out again. It's wonderful stuff. And now I'm going to soak this overnight. I'm going to put about, uh, oh, two cups of pasoli soaked overnight. Look at that. I've got a garlic flake in there. I have a garlic flake in everything. I think there's a garlic flake in my bed. It's awful. There. <laughs> we'll soak this overnight, and they'll swell up beautifully. And we're going to cook that. Drain it, and then cook it in six cups of water, along with some pork. Very simple to do. Find a pot here. Isn't it fun to see so many foods with which you have no familiarity at all, and yet they're basic to our land? Basic, basic. More so than, uh, than the, uh, the beans that they brought to Boston from England, you see. Put about a half a pound of pork into, about a pound of pork, I'm sorry. Put a pound of pork into the pot, and then add the two cups of pasoli, which have been soaking overnight in six cups of water. Add the water and all. Add a little salt if you like. And then bring that to a simmer. It's going to take a long time to cook. We're talking another hour and a half because you want these to burst. Well, I'll show you. You want them to burst. For additional flavoring, uh, I would suggest some oregano. 
These are, these are common in uh, New Mexico now. A little oregano, and if you want, you can add some green chili, or some red chili. I put some chili in the other pots already, so we'll put this on the stove, and I have one all ready for you. Oh, boy, these old pots are heavy, aren't they? Patty refuses to cook with these, but I like them, uh, not just because they're old American, and I'm trying to use a gimmick for an American show, but because you can simmer for a long, long time with very little heat in any of these. This, this new one, these square jobs that you see, these are from England. This is a new style. Uh, Victor uh, uh, imports them from England. This old one that you see in the front of the stove, of course, goes back there. I bought this in a second-hand store, made by Wagner Ware. They're still making them. You can still buy them, no problem. All right, the pisoli is done, and I'll put it out for you. I think you're going to enjoy this one. I better put a pad out here. I don't want to uh, let's do that. I don't want to dirty these rugs any more than I have to. One of these is going to go on my wall, and the pots are going to sit around my bedroom. They're going to be beautiful. All right, there's pasoli and pork. You see, you've cooked, you've cooked the, uh, the, the corn, which is really hominy, until it's popped. You see how, how different that is than the, than the plain corn? Before they're cooked, they're, they're, they're very different, you see? After they're cooked, they, they literally pop open. Now the dish is very, very tender, and that odor, that odor of corn with lime, you know, make the hominy, you see, make the hominy. Corn with lime, cooked with pork, smells so much like, uh, like Albuquerque that I, I just can't believe it. There's a certain sense in which an odor will bring back a visit, a time, a childhood, a memory, and we're sure that that happens more often with, with uh, odors and food than it does with your own uh, mental ability. Okay, let's see, what else did I want to show you? Uh, the pumpkin stew you've seen, the corn chips, okay. I think we've had it for uh, New Mexican cooking. There's a, there are thousands of other things you can do, and I want you to try this. First of all, remember that you've got to find good peppers. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but if there's a Mexican market anywhere in your area, they will generally have the sort of food products you want. Otherwise, write me, and I'll give you an address. Be sure and include a self-addressed stamped envelope, and I'll give you an address in New Mexico where you can write and pick up all sorts of things, including uh, blue corn, uh, the pozole. Remember, the pozole is the corn. Well, let's go through this, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. You need chilies in order to make carne adobado. This is a wonderful one. It, is, it sounds like it's going to be so hot you won't even touch it, but it's wonderful. It's not hot at all. Pumpkin and corn, I think, you can find in your backyard. That shouldn't be any difficulty. The beans with chicos, the little chicos you're going to have trouble finding, but the beans with chicos are wonderful with a little bit of pork. The chicos can be shipped to you uh, without the much expense at all. They're not at all expensive once you contract the place down in New Mexico. I have a good farm. Casedados, they're wonderful. And then the, my favorite, the green chili stew you can make. Go to your supermarket and find the green chilies. You'll find them. And finally, the pozole with pork. Wonderful things from New Mexico. There you have it. Wonderful food that's truly American. Till I see you again, this is the Frugal Gourmet. I bid you peace. Bye-bye.